even if the targeted immigrant population has changed. Discourses about the dangers of immigrants are old. Demands that newcomers assimilate so as not to threaten American culture and traditions have been kept out of political rhetoric for more than a century. A hundred years ago, Trump-like politicians warned of the threat posed to the republic by Italian-speaking anarchists. It's mostly the descriptors that change. It's no surprise, then, that one of Trump's closest allies, his daughter-in-law Lara Trump, who is married to Eric Trump, appeared on Newsmax to voice one of the boldest warnings about immigrants they don't speak English. Trump stated that his father-in-law's campaign promise during the 2016 presidential election focused on immigration. This is true. Even then, Trump realized the political power of amplifying right-wing xenophobia that his rivals refused to embrace. He went on to warn that there could be a danger posed by immigrants, which is more recent rhetoric aimed at portraying President Biden as negligent. And then it got to the globalists. There are a lot of elites all over the world, not just in America but all over the world. He said, who think we should have a free flow of people, that there should be no borders. They have this globalist idea in their mind. That's the point of all this. After all, again, this isn't really new. It revolves around the idea that immigrants here and elsewhere have somehow tarnished national identities. And that, in Lara Trump's framing, international elites have deliberately facilitated this. If it's not a wonderful substitution theory, it's adjacency. After Newsmax host Eric Bowling suggested that immigrants should determine, for example, the number amendments to the Constitution, Trump said that, in effect, when you're a citizen of another country, you're supposed to be part of society. This shows up in bilingual education. He said, people starting see lot of school systems now that things are being taught in English and things being taught Spanish. Because there were a lot of people South Central America, South Mexico, and that they need find way teach our education system these kids. I mean, this is the United States of America. We speak English here, but if you go anywhere in this country, Eric, you'll find everything in English and Spanish as well. This claim has been brought up many times. Although most residents of the United States speak English, there is no official language required by federal law. This provided an opportunity for those who wanted to capitalize on the same thinking as Trump. Vance introduced a bill in March that would make English the nation's official language. A 2010 Congressional Research Service report notes that effort to recognize English as the national language can be traced to mid-1980s. Census Bureau data show that in 1980, 9 out of 10 people living in the United States spoke English at home. And by 1990, this rate had dropped to about 86 per.